Hi, if you've been diagnosed with age-related macular degeneration, this is for you. My name's Hannah Nunn. I'm a nutritional therapist. I'm based in the UK, but I work worldwide, helping people with AMD take control of their condition by improving their overall health. Today, I'm asking the question, can what we eat really influence our AMD? And the answer is yes. I'm going to give you three reasons why you should believe this. Firstly, let's consider the risk factors for AMD. Heart disease, raised cholesterol, raised blood pressure, weight gain, and type 2 diabetes. Medical experts agree that if you have these conditions, you are more likely to develop AMD. And we already know that these conditions are all influenced by what we eat. Most of us already understand that if we eat healthily, we are less likely to develop heart disease, we are less likely to develop type 2 diabetes, and we are more likely to have a healthy weight. Secondly, let's consider some of the disease processes involved in AMD. Inflammation, oxidative stress, and mitochondrial dysfunction. Let's start with inflammation. Inflammation can be caused by things that we eat or drink. Things like alcohol, sugar, unhealthy fats, processed foods, um, these can all raise levels of inflammation in our body. So simply by removing or reducing these foods, we can improve levels of in inflammation in the body. I also mentioned a situation called oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is extremely damaging to the body. Too much oxidative stress causes cells not to function properly and eventually leads to cell death. So if you consider this in the context of AMD, you can see how this could lead to sight loss. One of the things causing oxidative stress is inflammation. So as we've just mentioned, removing inflammatory foods from the diet can immediately have a positive effect on levels of oxidative stress. Another way to improve oxidative stress is to eat plenty of foods that are high in antioxidants. Most of you will probably have heard this term before. This is things like your fruit, especially berries, your vegetables, things like green tea, there are many uh, great foods that are high in antioxidants that we can add into our diets to positively influence levels of oxidative stress in the body. I also mentioned mitochondrial dysfunction. Now that's a bit of a mouthful. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but mitochondria are found in every cell in the body. They produce energy for that cell. Um, and if they're not functioning properly, then our cells will literally be low on energy. Cell processes will run slowly. Um, so in AMD, for example, you will get a buildup of waste products, which eventually lead to the formation of drusen, which you will probably be familiar with if you've been diagnosed with AMD. Mitochondria need very specific nutrients to function and um, a reliable fuel source. Um, and you get both of these things through a healthy diet. So again, we can influence mitochondrial function through what we eat. Oxidative stress and inflammation can also hinder mitochondrial function. Um, and conversely, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction leads to increased levels of oxidative stress and inflammation. So you can see how we've got this vicious cycle going on. But all of these things we can positively influence um, or negatively influence through what we eat. Thirdly, let's consider the epidemiological evidence. Uh, now, epidemiology is the study of um, pattern of a disease or history of a disease and it can often give us clues as to what is causing that disease. I'm going to make three observations based on the evidence that we've got. The first one is that before processed foods were introduced to our diet, AMD was a rare condition. So we're talking about back at the turn of the last century when people were still eating their traditional ancestral diets, AMD was a rare condition. So my second one is since the introduction of processed foods, AMD has gone from being a rare disease to affecting over 11 million people in the USA. It's gone from being rare to being the leading cause of irreversible sight loss in over 65s in the Western world. My third one is, if we follow AMD around the world, we see that nations previously unaffected by AMD show a significant increase in number of cases about 30 years following the introduction of uh, processed foods into their traditional ancestral diets. So these nations are consuming their traditional ancestral diets and they have virtually no AMD or no AMD. 
uh, about 30 years after the introduction of processed foods, they start to show this significant increase in number of people affected. So a quick recap. Can what I eat really make a difference to my AMD? The answer is yes. Why? Because number one, we can affect the risk factors for AMD through our diet. Number two, we can affect the disease processes involved in AMD through our diet. And number three, there's this significant link between the introduction of processed foods into our diet and increasing numbers of people suffering with AMD. So I hope I've answered that question for you today and I hope I've persuaded you it's worth making some changes. If you want to know more about nutrition for AMD, please don't hesitate to get in touch. You can book your free discovery call with me using the link below. Everyone who comes on a discovery call with me will receive my free PDF filled with tips on how to eat healthily for your eyes. If you've enjoyed the video today, please like and comment below. And if you want to hear more from me, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day. Bye bye.